This comparison video will look at using GPS navigation to intercept and assign radial or course to a waypoint in the Avidyne IFD and the Garmin GTN. I won't be demonstrating the GNS and G1000, except for very small variations, mostly due to the touchscreen. They do the same thing in the same way as the GTN. This was originally going to be about OBS mode, the GPS version of what we did with VOR. But the more I looked, the more I saw that focusing solely on OBS mode was too limited. If we are going to a waypoint, there may be other, perhaps better choices. We will use a VOR for our example, but it could be any fix or waypoint. And since I don't think I have ever heard an instruction from ATC to fly a bearing or radial away from a waypoint to nowhere in particular, we won't talk about those either. Our scenario is a common IFR routing from Caldwell, New Jersey to Atlantic City. The vectors and intercepts were given to me by a New York City controller. Cleared to the Atlantic City Airport via radar vectors LV, Direct Coltsneck, Direct Dixie, Victor 229, Atlantic City, Direct. Let's go. As we join the flight, we have been receiving vectors out of Caldwell for the traffic in the Triple Bravo, New York City area. We cross over the center of Newark International when we receive this instruction. Turn right heading 200, intercept the Colesneck 350 degree radial inbound, then on course. A fairly simple and common VOR instruction, and it is definitely a legitimate option to tune and identify the VOR and do it that way. But let's see our options for doing it with the new tech. We are over Newark when we receive the instruction to fly heading 200 and intercept the Colesneck 350 radial. We aviate, make our turn, then navigate by confirming our heading and setting up the box for the intercept. OBS mode in the IFD is very straightforward. As with VOR, given a radial to intercept inbound, we need to know the reciprocal. In this case, the 350 radial translates to a 170 degree course to Coltsneck. Since LVE is still the active waypoint, we need to change that to Coltsneck. We highlight it on the flight plan, make it the active waypoint with the direct key. Once active, we can go up to the combined CDI OBS control on the top right of the unit, press the control to engage OBS mode, and once it stops flashing, twist it to 170. As we intercept the Coltsneck 350 degree radial, we can see one of the differences between Avidyne and Garmin logic at work. You can see here that Avidyne OBS mode does not suspend automatic sequencing. Our magenta course line to Coltsneck is followed immediately by the leg to Dixie. You will see something different with Garmin. When in OBS mode, Garmin suspends automatic sequencing until we take it out of OBS mode. Returning to our flight, we are approaching Coltsneck. Since the unit is automatically sequencing to the next leg of our planned route, it is no longer following our manually selected course the IFD automatically disengages OBS mode. One other item to be aware of with OBS mode in the IFD, to get out of OBS mode, all one needs to do is press the CDI OBS control and turn it off. So if while we were flying this heading to intercept the 350 degree radial, we receive an instruction to proceed direct Colts neck, all we need to do is press and hold the CDI OBS control. Let's return to our vectored position over Newark. In the introduction, I said there may be other ways than OBS mode of accomplishing a task like this. If you are very good at maintaining situational awareness, have been paying close attention to the route, and maybe you're pretty clever, you may have seen it. We make our turn to intercept as instructed. We are ready to make Coltsneck our active waypoint when we notice something. We are going to intercept the 350 radial. That's 170 degrees to Coltsneck, but the originally cleared route in our flight plan shows us that the route between Elve and Coltsneck is 172 degrees. That's a negligible difference and more than accounted for by the normal variance between VOR declination and GPS course. 
Yes, ATC is vectoring us back to our originally cleared course. So rather than direct to Coltsneck, followed by pressing OBS mode and twisting, let's just activate the leg between Elve and Coltsneck. Same result. Here is our flight plan in the GTN. Bear in mind that although we are using the GTN to illustrate, aside from the touchscreen, this will work the same way in the GNS and G1000 families. As with the IFD, basic OBS mode consists of two steps. Since Coltsneck is not the current active waypoint, we need to make it so. Easiest is to tap Coltsneck, say direct, and accept it. We then tap OBS and change the course to 170. We can see a significant difference from the IFD logic. Not better, not worse, just different. Unlike the IFD, Garmin OBS mode suspends automatic flight plan sequencing. Looking down toward Coltsneck, we see that the 170 degree course line continues past Coltsneck. And although the continuation of the flight to Dixie and beyond is still part of our flight plan, the latter legs are gone from the map page. So long as it remains in OBS mode, the unit will not prompt for the turn to Dixie. The other and related difference is that OBS mode in the Garmin is sticky. Having set our new course to Coltsneck, we can turn off OBS mode. Not only does automatic sequencing resume, but unlike the IFD which reverts back to the original course when OBS mode is turned off, the Garmin will retain our current 170 degree course line to Coltsneck. Activate leg, shown in the IFD segment as an alternative to OBS mode for this situation, is a standard function across GPS navigators. I think most of us first came across Activate Leg as a replacement for Vectors to Final when doing instrument approaches. But as we demonstrated, its functionality is not limited to instrument approaches. It intercepts the courses in SIDS, STARS, and on route clearances benefit from it as well. Here is the way it works in the GTN. We pull up the flight plan, tap Coltsneck, notice it already has the course we want, and choose the Activate Leg option. Colesnack is now our active waypoint, and our course to it is 172 degrees. The one issue with Activate Leg is, well, we need a leg to activate. It works in our scenario because we are told to intercept the 350 radio, which just happens to already be loaded in our flight plan. Leave out LVA in our scenario, and Activate Leg wouldn't work. Back to basic OBS mode? Not necessarily. Let's take a look at another option, which the Garmin navigators give us. It bypasses the need to use OBS mode, and unlike Activate Leg, does not depend on there being, and we recognizing, an existing leg going in the same direction. It can be used anytime we would use OBS mode to set a course to a waypoint. In fact, that's what Garmin calls it, course to waypoint. It has been there since at least the GNS 430. When we tap direct, we see a dialog box allowing us to set a course other than the one direct to the waypoint. Using it in our scenario, we enter the desired course directly into the flight plan. We avoid suspending automatic sequencing and bypass the need to activate direct, then switch to OBS mode, dial in the 170 degree course, and then switch out of OBS mode again. Thank you for watching. Your comments, both good and bad, are more than welcome.